If we want to be a better person, if we want to create a better world, we need to be brave. Welcome to the When We Are Brave podcast, a podcast sharing inspirational stories and conversations, plus tips and tricks on living your best and bravest life. I'm your host, Tiffany Johnson, author of Brave Enough Now, keynote speaker and your host of the When We Are Brave podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to When We Are Brave. I know that together we are going to live our best and bravest life. Welcome to the When We Are Brave podcast. I am so excited today to introduce to you a very dear friend of mine. She is an incredible woman, Anne Rodas. Anne is the founder of the Institute of Soul-Based Therapy, owner and practitioner of Soul's Destiny. She's a radiographer and has worked in the medical industry for 39 years. She's also a hypnotherapist. Anne and I have been talking for a little while about our current situation in the world and Anne has joined us today to help us to align ourselves with the new world that we are creating. So Anne, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about COVID-19. I'm thrilled to have you here. Thanks, Tiff. It's great to be here. Do you want to just tell a little bit of our listeners about who you are and um, how you've come to be in the position where you can help us move forward in this new an interesting space that we've all found ourselves in. Sure. Um, so I grew up in quite a left brain family <laughs> in that uh, we have a lot of medical background. My father was an engineer. So a lot of people find it very interesting that I've ended up in quite a different area as well as still, you know, having access to the medical arena um, in that, you know, Soul work, spiritual work, hypnotherapy, all of that sort of thing is generally considered to be a, a bit of the other end of the scale. Um, so it's interesting. I am, um, I've always had an interest in both areas. And so therefore, my work developed uh, more along the lines of wanting to take the best of both and incorporate both in the way that we think and feel and heal. Um, I am certainly an advocate for Western medicine and I'm an advocate for Eastern medicine um, and everything in between. I believe that we have been given tools, we've been given knowledge and abilities to learn new ways of healing, thus the, the Western medicine, um, but we've also been given things on our planet that are also useful and that have been used for many, many years. Um, so I suppose my passion is about incorporating the East and the West or science and spirit. What a fantastic combination. I'm also a big believer in um, Western and Eastern and everything in between. As a Reiki practitioner and a remedial massage therapist, I have definitely used the two to help um, with different healing aspects. It's so important in our world to be diverse, I think, in many different ways. And medicine is one way that not everyone would agree with that. Some people are one way or the other, but I, I personally like a blend of the two. So... Tell us, and what does it mean to you to live your best and bravest life in our current situation with COVID-19? Most of the world is in lockdown or in quarantine or in self-isolation. We are all saying that we're all together and yet we are all isolated in our own homes. Uh, there's a lot of fear in our world at the moment. There's a lot of anxiety that's um, roaming around. There's a very heavy energy when you walk in the streets, even though people are doing all the right things and avoiding each other for the social distancing aspect of the 1.5 metre to 2 metre distance and saying good morning or good afternoon. But we are definitely um, on our own in this and we're trying to work out ways in which we can come together and be brave in doing so. Have you got some um, ideas with regards to our world and our changing world and how we can yeah, absolutely, Tiff. Um, so my recent experience has been, as I mentioned earlier, I come from a family of uh, medical people. So 
I have actually been, I've just spent two weeks staying with my brother in Singapore, who is playing a major role in this pandemic. Um, and so I spent that two weeks being exposed to all information COVID-19. Um, you know, TVs of all channels on constantly. So I had plenty of exposure to it, not the virus, but plenty of exposure to the information about it. Um, and then consequently, I missed by just a few hours getting back before the need to self-quarantine, so um, self-isolate. So I have come back to being in self-isolation for another two weeks. So the interesting thing is I have not been out in community in Australia for nearly a month. Um, however, I will say I am an empath, so the difference in the energy between over there and here is phenomenal um, and I can pick up on it um, even in my own home. Um, so this has given me a lot of time to be able to think about uh, what all this means and where we're headed. Um, I don't want to go into why is this happening. Um, of course, I am a believer that there is a reason for everything, but I don't always believe that it's it's valuable to delve into the why all the time. Um, I'm a fairly proactive person and I do believe that there are already a lot of people out there that are talking about the why, why is this happening? Um, and so I'll leave that to them. What I would rather talk about is that the world will be a different place. Um, we will have pre-virus and post-virus, just as there was pre-war and post-war. Uh, how that world will be when all this settles, I believe, is up to us. I don't believe that is written in concrete because uh, I believe that we have free will. Um, however, I do think we are being called right now. Uh, all around the world, we are being called to be brave. Um, so what does that mean? Well, if you look at the initial reactions to the virus, well, to begin with in Australia, which was probably before I left for Singapore, um, a fair bit of the attitude was, well, that's happening over there and it doesn't really have anything to do with me. Yeah, definitely. So already that showed a fair degree of separation um, and a lack of self-responsibility. Uh, anything I'm saying here, by the way, has no blame and no accusations because it's just an observation of, how we as a human race have become. Um, so the next thing that was pretty stand out to everybody was once we realised that it was going to affect us personally, we saw so many people go into the fight-flight response, which was the, the hoarding and the literal fighting in the supermarkets that we've all seen on TV. Um, and so people immediately went into uh, even more about me, more about the separation and, you know, what is selfish behaviour. But again, I say this with no judgment because those people went into fight flight. It was their response to fear. Um, and a response to fear is generally selfish. If even if you look in the animal kingdom, it's it's every man for themselves, every wolf for themselves, every bear. It's it's the way animals respond. Here, there was an amazing video of a wombat hole, and the animals were coming out of the wombat hole. But it wasn't just a wombat that came out. It was there was a goanna, there was an echidna, and there was a couple of little tiny lizards, and a wombat. And the wombat had put the other animals in there. As I say, the wombat came out first. And so the wombat 
um, because when they put their bottom up towards the top of the hole, um, that's a harder surface. So the wombat actually protected those animals. And I think that there's a really good analogy to where we are at now, where even though they were all different types of animals, but they and they were all together in what was their homes were being destroyed by the fires. That amazing group of animals stayed together to protect each other, and we need to do that now. Oh, that's fantastic. What a beautiful analogy, Tiv. Yeah. Uh, uh, Yeah, and that's exactly where I'm leading to, and I'm not aware of that, that clip, but, you know, wow, some of those animals have beaten some of us to it which is, you know, we, we can learn from that. Um, you know, in all that I'm saying, I'm not saying that everybody went into fight flight. You know, it's never a case of everybody. Um, it's, you know, it's some. It's always some. And, again, it's no criticism that these people are doing the best they can with where they're at at that time. Um but I do believe that we're being called upon to be a more united community and, and that is global because this thing is happening globally. You know, we have several generations having this experience all at once and each of those generations have their own obstacles to overcome in order to be more coherent and and more united um we we've seen a a pattern of uh you know some again not all um having more of a mentality of immediate gratification uh now that's not a criticism of of those people or that generation because they've learned that from perhaps my generation you know, so that it, it's just it just is. There's there's no judgment here. Um, but again, what that leads to with this immediate gratification is again a separation. So the theme that I'm trying to lead to here, Tiff, is that I feel we've become more separate, even though there is a lot of new age talk about you know being there for each other and being united. At the end of the day, um, we need to act. It's not about talk. It's about what we do, not what, not just what we say. Um, and so I think it's just so important that we start going, okay, we know that we're in a very different situation to, I won't say any other time because this something like this has happened in our history, but, of course, we had no technology back then. We didn't travel as much, so things were a bit different. But if you look back in our history at all the times of, let's say, crisis, um, world wars, um, they can bring out the best in us. You know, we talk about um, mateship on Anzac Day. You know, during the war, people came together and they would die for their, for their Um, fellow fighters you know so is this is about us coming together and again being reminded that we as souls are trying to grow and evolve towards a place of oneness and unity and that's beautiful Anne oh thanks Tiff um (laughs) but but what has happened is if you have a look we have become more separate in so many ways. And technology has, you know, in its way, technology can't do it, of course. It requires human beings to do it. But the way we have adapted te- technology up until now is for it to divide us. You know, you, you've seen all those posts of everybody sitting around a dinner table with their phones. Instead of being together together, Um, And now we're seeing how we're now trying to use that technology to bring us together, even though we're separate. And it's just such a a contrast if we look at at already, 
it, we're fairly early on in the in the process of this virus, um, and yet already we can see that there are some that are going okay. We're now separate. We're in isolation. How can we come together now? And so, t- Anne, tell us um, some ideas and tools that you've got to help us come together. I know that a couple of my girlfriends have said let's do Skype Friday afternoon drinks and so there's a certain time we all um, get on the video of and, and sit down and either have a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever it is that person wants and we all have a chat. That's the plan for coming in the future. So what are some of the other ways that we can reach out to each other and be connected with those that are around yeah. us. Yeah. Okay. So what what I can really see is that that this this time is not about fear. Um, I know there is a lot of fear around, but it's actually about personal responsibility. It's less about self and more about the whole, which as I said before, that you know, we're in a global situation here. There, is, there isn't one human being that isn't being impacted by this to some degree. Um, so instead of the fear, let's focus on what we can do because we, um, just so you know where I'm coming from, um, as you introduced me in the beginning, I've developed soul-based therapy. So what soul-based therapy is about is helping people to transform, you know, those negative voices that prevent us from being able to be brave. So those negative voices that say, well, you know, I can't make a difference or what can I do? Or, you know, I'm just a victim to this virus and, well, you know, I just have to wait and see what happens. so some of these things can actually, they, they become part of our belief system and therefore they actually completely separate us from that little, that other voice that's there going, no, you know, you are as worthy to hold the space on this planet as, as anybody else. So we have this little internal fight within us um, and it misaligns us from what we're really capable of being and capable of doing. So it's it's that voice that says, no, you are here for a purpose that I would like re- people to really get in touch with and perhaps write down a vision that you might have as to how you would like to see the world at the end of this and then take responsibility for taking steps towards creating that reality in the world that we want to see. So what can you as an individual do? And I mean do, not just say. It's about action that actually results in a manifestation. So it doesn't matter how small it might be, but it's it's up to the individual to be creative. As you said, you've got Um, friends that are going okay let's do drinks over Skype and that's an awesome step because you're building a community ultimately we also want to put some things in place that can be there when this is done when we no longer have to um, connect uh, through Skype and can get together but it's it's then okay how can we How can we put those things aside that have previously separated us uh, and put some things in place that are going to bring us together as a united global human race? Yeah, that's really great advice, Anne, really great. So there's some really awesome tools out there um, that everybody can do, which uh, I am a massive fan of journaling. I've always been a massive fan of journaling. I've done it my whole life. And this is a really great opportunity to journal in a new way in terms of really looking inwardly at yourself and really thinking about exactly what Anne's talking about, making sure that you are the person that you're wanting to be and that you can take your responsibility for who you are and how that's going to help a broad and 
not infect others by staying home and connecting with other people and thinking outside the box a little bit in how you can help your local community. And sometimes when you write down on paper, there is nowhere to hide. You find that what's inside your head comes out, even the things that you possibly don't really want to face. And I just think that's a fabulous tool. On my website, I've got a free mini guided journal that you're very welcome to download if that's the steps that would help you to take some responsibility at this time and uh, help our fellow humans because we all need to be in this together across the globe. Just to, if I can add to that, um, something that I, I often find helps is to take yourself forward and and go, what would I want people to be saying about my behaviour, what, what I did through that time? How would I like to look back on me and how, what, what sort of a difference I could make? to creating the world that I want to live in. So, yeah, it's to, 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 to forward project and then past project, if you like, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and I think you've got to be really brave to be able to do that. It takes a lot of courage within your own self to really be able to show who you are to yourself and look back and then look forward. Like, as you say, there's a really great practice um, that I try and do every night. And that is, I look at my day in my mind, kind of like a movie. And I think about all the things that I did in that day. And sometimes there are parts of it that I'm not particularly proud of where I may have um, lost it. Like yesterday, I couldn't work one of the, uh, I couldn't work out how to do one of the audio post-production things. So I started screaming at my laptop. (laughs) I, we I, all do I'm, that. <laughs> yeah, I'm very human. Um, yeah. And so I rewound that in my head and deleted that scene from, from my head and went, no, I was successful in achieving what I wanted to achieve and it went, went all smooth sailing and that's what I want my subconscious to focus on the things that I can do. And so I look at the things that I think, okay, I need to change that or I don't want to be that person, I want to be this person or I want to take more responsibility for how I'm uh, utilising my time in this time and connecting with other people in particular now really wanting to make sure that um, people have got great podcasts to listen to like the When We Are Brave podcast and so I'm ensuring that um, that is on top of my list because that's a way that I can help our broader community across the globe and there's something really rewarding in that and I think that that's a great uh, it's a really great tool to do that of an evening when before you go to bed or when you're having a shower or brushing your teeth and just stop and think, okay, what was today? What went well? Fantastic. Awesome. What didn't go so well? Okay. How would I fix that for tomorrow? And this is the person that I want to be tomorrow. So set your intention for who you are for the next day before you go to sleep. And often I find that I wake up and um, I have my morning routine as well that I go through, but um, that really does help. Exactly. And look, this isn't about self-criticism at all. Uh, no. If personal self-responsibility, personal responsibility is not about self-criticism. It's, it's the opposite. It's about self-forgiveness because we, none of us are perfect. You know, we hear that all the time. But the fact is, if we were, we wouldn't need to be here anymore. We're all here on a learning path. So it's, it's about Forgive self, as you said, and go, okay, that, that's not who I want to be. I'm going to make it make that different tomorrow. So that's the personal responsibility. And that's about the, the growth and moving forward and becoming who we want to be. And it doesn't mean we won't make mistakes along the way. No, we all learn through our mistakes. And in fact, when I was screaming at the computer, my delightful 12-year-old son decided to record that and <laughs> <laughs> and we all had a really good giggle at it later on in the evening. So <laughs> yeah, it was very funny. Um, but you've got you to laugh, don't you? You've got to laugh. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, I, I think to laugh at yourself can sometimes be brave as well. And then it becomes a habit. It becomes a routine. It's it's stepping out of our comfort zone that requires us to be brave because by definition it has to be uncomfortable or it would already be in our comfort zone. So if we want to be a better person, if we want to create a better world, 
we need to be brave and step out of our comfort zone and do something different. Yeah, that's great advice, Anne. Absolutely. Well, I think we've all got so many amazing tips for moving forward in this difficult and unknown climate. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. I really feel like we are all going to be able to take responsibility for ourselves and help our planet and help change the world into the new world post-virus. And it's a really great uh, time for us to think about how we can create that world that we all want to live in. So thank you, Anne, for being so inspiring and sharing your bravery with us today. Thank you, Tiffany. It's been an absolute pleasure being here. If you're interested in getting in contact with Anne, you can do so through a few different avenues. She has a couple of websites, her souldestiny.com.au website and also her institute, the soulbasedtherapy.com.au and also has a great Facebook group, which is Soul Speak at Facebook. You can contact her through there as well. Make sure you subscribe to the When We Are Brave podcast. I would love it if you could leave a review. Reviews help shows get the word out. So please tell your friends and family about When We Are Brave so they too can grab some inspiration and tips and tricks on living their best and bravest life. You can find out more about me on my website, tiffanyjohnson.com.au. My book, Brave Enough Now, an inspirational true story of self-discovery, survival and hope, is also available on Amazon and soon to come out as an audio book. I'm so excited. And don't forget to download your free mini guided journal. Head over to my website, tiffanyjohnson.com.au and download your copy today. It might just be the thing that can help you take responsibility for how our world is going to look at the end of this crisis. I love to share my story with audiences across the globe. As a keynote speaker, I tell my story and I share my tools and tips on resilience and how you can live your best and bravest life. You can also connect with me through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn or send me an email. I love connecting with people. So please head over to my website, tiffanyjohnson.com.au. So my friends, be brave until next time and live your best and bravest life.